hopes, budget of aspirations, budget for Amrit Kal. Hello and a very warm welcome viewers. You're watching this special presentation of Sunset TV on Budget 2022. And joining us on the program is a very special guest, Union Housing and Urban Affairs Minister and also Petroleum Minister, Mr. Hardeep Singh Puri. Sir, welcome to Sunset TV and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. So as we said, budget for Amrit Kal. That's what the Finance Minister said. Big takeaways for you from this budget. Before I give you my two yes. big takeaways, I want to share with you the feeling I had when I was sitting in the house listening to the Honorable Finance Minister. And I said, my God, one year ago, we were in the midst of this dreaded pandemic. We're not out of it yet. Yes. One year ago, and I think we're close to the second wave, our major preoccupation was how do we get people completely vaccinated? Do we, will we manage to restructure, almost reinvent our health care sector? Remember when the pandemic broke out, we were having to fly in uh, masks, uh, ventilators, um, essential medical um, supplies, including drugs. Today, after pandemic, we still have to deal with the challenges. But what was the feeling I had there? My God, you've already distributed over more than 1.7, no, 171 crores. You have a population of 1.34 billion and you have already distributed more than 1.72 billion vaccine doses, most of them free. You've been able to provide food, essential rations, thrice a day to in the excess of 80 crore people, okay? And when the Honorable Finance Minister turns around and says, I want to share with Honorable Members that the GST collection for the month of January, for which the figures only came in late last night, is 1,41,000 crores. Madam... This is the highest in GST was this thing, which means the economy is firing on all six cylinders. And then on top of that, if you look at, it's a clearly growth oriented. Aapne baat ki India at 100 ki. Right. Well, at least for the next 25 years, the next 10 years will be determined here. CapEx increase yes. from 5.5 lakh crores to 7.5 lakh crores, an increase of 35%. That is what warms my heart. That here, India, in spite of all the challenges uh, produced by the pandemic, in spite of the fact that we've had to hand out food rations to 80 crore plus people, which is continuing till March, yes. in spite of us having to make direct payments to our farmers every few months, etc., the figures are looking good. Urea subsidy has increased. Agricultural credit has increased. And quite a part, budget doesn't deal with everything. Your MSP on wheat, MSP on rice, okay? You've been able to do all that. And yet, and yet, the focus is on growth. Because CAPEX is what will determine it. And I believe that, uh, you know, we had uh, prophets of doom. People who will say, ye ho jaga, ho jaga. You were able to withstand and deal with the consequences of the disruption of supply chains. Yes. And today you're facing a situation that the economy is on reasonably good standing. Your rate of growth, you will be ending the financial year, okay, current fiscal uh, uh, year, 21-22, at 9.2%. Madam, I've spent 39 years in a different career. I've lived in, in any other country of the world, if you could register 2, 3, 4%, you should be uh, happy with yourself. 9.2% growth in this one. And on a modest conservative estimate, next year also 8, 8.5%. So I think the government has succeeded thanks to the Prime Minister's bold, upfront, hands-on leadership to walk the talk. We've dealt with the pandemic. We have dealt with the health sector. And we are today now looking at growth in all the areas which make for in a welfare setting. Nobody has been left to the, you know, to fend for himself or herself. You know, in my ministry, we had a target of one crore uh, Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana Urban. We revised that subsequently to one crore yes. 12 lakhs. Today, we've already gone one crore 14 lakhs. 
Today when I saw the announcement that for the Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana Grameen and Urban Together, another 80 lakh yes. homes for which I find uh, in the looking at the budget figures we have 48,000 crores yes. for our part. It warms your heart that this is a government which has been able to achieve its targets, which believes in uh, development anchored and an development anchored in actual concrete progress double engine sarkar so i think we have grounds to be satisfied and i liked your uh, characterization of hope aspiration and india at 100 all right sir before we get into the specifics of your ministry you talked about the economic growth projections of course that inspires confidence but mr puri look at this this is an uncharted territory we don't know how the virus is going to behave we don't know what happens to the global supply chains. We also don't know what about the crude oil prices. And we also don't know how the liquidity withdrawal will play out by global central banks. So this is an unprecedented crisis. Madam, I entirely agree with you. And uh, when I wake up every morning, I have one of two choices. Either I start the day by agonizing about all that can go wrong, from Central Vista to a sale of Air India, etc. And I agree with you, if I have to drop a list of all that could go wrong, yes, there could be an exacerbation of international tensions on account of what's happening, yes. let's say, hypothetically, yes. between Russia and the Ukraine, yes. which what's happening in the South China Sea. That's one way of looking at it. Because of that, oil prices may go up. Exactly. All right? Because of that, something else may, liquidity may uh, be affected. But I look at it slightly differently. That is what makes the management the governance, all the more exciting. And I think what the Honorable Prime Minister has been able to demonstrate for the last three years, actually for seven years now, is that when there comes a crisis, this brings out the best in us with his leadership. Today, vaccine, there was a time, I think about this time last year, when anyone asked about vaccine, Modi ji, our children's vaccine, chup ho gaye, koi poochta nahi hai. Because today, you, the, there's more than enough vaccine production. Of course, we honored the two, Serum Institute and the co-vaccine producer, deservedly. All the other things a confident India can face. Supply chain disruption was a challenge when the pandemic broke out because you had to import. Today, that challenge has resulted in India becoming the world's largest vaccine manufacturer. Yes. And I'm glad that the, maybe you called it the taunts of the opposition. You know, we took on the challenge. I mean, there was a time when they were very unhappy about the fact that um, emergency use authorization was given to one of the vaccine suppliers. Well, I read it differently. I said, these are some of these guys are trying to make out a case for the import of more expensive vaccine. They were not serious about domestic manufacturing. But because there was a supply chain disruption, because you couldn't depend on uh, anyway, you started becoming the world's largest manufacturer of masks, not only masks, of remdesivir and all the other things, and of ventilators, and you started exporting them. Right. So we could have either continued, thanks to those, those very supply chains, to become the world's largest importer, or you became a manufacturer and in turn exporting. Well, that's what I call Atma Nirbharta in um, full focus, under right. full scrutiny. Right, Mr. Puri. You mentioned about Avas. Let's talk about Avas now. 48,000 crore allocation, 80 lakh houses in urban as well as rural areas. So what about the execution timelines? Now the onus is on you. Look, there is a point at which you started. And there's a point at which you have reached. And there is a point to which you go. If you ask me, the norm used to be brick and mortar. Yes. You'll have people coming up, putting up brick by brick. Slowly, you're moving into modern technologies. Those six lighthouse projects which we've got in six different cities where you're making a thousand units in one year. And I think in five out of the six, we are succeeding also. Okay. But I have you ask you another question. We will at some stage get where everything will be done 3D or come immediately assembled. Maybe that will happen sooner than later. We make the new parliament building in 22 months. 
Central Vista was, Avenue was done in record time. All right, little bit of work still remaining. Uh, my BJP party office was built in, constructed uh, in 14 months. I'm making a different point. Different societies have different requirements. You also don't want to move. You, you had a total labor intensive thing. Then you brought in technology. Then you brought in modern uh, construction technologies. We had a construction technology. You also don't want to go to a situation where, you know, it's just technology and people will not. I take great pride in the fact that when the Pradhan Mantri of Aas Yojana, we say we want to make one lakh more houses, I calculate how much more employment it's going to generate, yes. how much more cement is going to be required, how much more steel is going to be required. Each of them in turn then uh, produce uh, employment. You know, I was delighted to see one figure today that the PLI scheme in um, 14 sectors yes. has resulted in 60 lakh new jobs. Now, you are an economy growing this year at 9.2%. My only submission to you, madam, is that if you grow at 9-10% or 8-9-10% for five years, this would be a discussion which we would be able to have in the past tense. Because then you will arrive. Because what happens is, you provide the basics, you provide the skills, and there's skill development program. If you look at the skill allocation, very impressive. Then after that, people look at one figure. Look at the unicorns, the yes. startups. I mean, where have they come from? You... You can't produce a unicorn. You can produce an ecosystem. And you produced an ecosystem which facilitates their germination and their growth. Right. And you've arrived. Absolutely. Okay, uh, talking about urban planning. Now, FM said that there would be a paradigm change in urban planning. There would be an expert committee. Also, the fact that transit, other schemes, implementation. So, holistically, if we look at it, what is your ministry doing about it? Well, first of all, when I sat there and I heard the Honorable Finance Minister, I was delighted. Okay. There are several things she said today. But why did she say that? Some of us have been saying that you look at the perspective of urban populations. My starting point is always 1947. India's population which resided in urban space was 17%, which was... 350 million, because the population itself was about 340, 350 million. By 2030, we will have 600 million people living in urban spaces. Yes. By 2040 or thereafter, I don't know the exact year, 50% of the population will be living in urban spaces. About 800 million people. Now, depending on yes. how your population grows, I mean, today it's 1.34 billion, then it might be 1.6 and you'll have 50%. Otherwise, it'll be more or less. Right. So she's absolutely right that now you've done your Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana, you've done your smart cities, etc., which you will continue to work on. Now start looking at the intellectual coordinates of re-imaging those urban spaces, including tier two and tier three cities. Right. So what she has said, and I totally endorse that, that you will set up a high-powered committee which will go into the examination of how these things are here, what is the nature of urbanization, how, what are the demographic uh, uh, results of that, yes. what the other cities of the world have done. Well, all our mega policies will be in the global uh, list. And this kind of a committee will be backed. I mean, I'm, this is not, these are not related, but five of our universities, which will yes. be which are looking at urban issues, urban study, uh, urban rejuvenation, if I may be allowed to use the term. They'll get 250 crores each. Now, 250 crores is not a lot of money, but if spent well, you start creating the nucleus for people to work on it. Now, there are a lot of good individuals who are working on these issues. I mean, we have people in Bangalore whom I consult. We have the National Institute of Urban Affairs. But when you have five universities doing that's one. Secondly, I think this is related because I'm talking about my ministry, but some of the things don't appear to come as if it's in our ministry, but it's it is. States will be able to take 50-year interest-free loans. And then the total figure is, what, 100,000 crores over an extended period of time. And one of the areas that you can deal with is this. Yes. So there's a lot in there. And I said it's a very, it's a, it's a very far-sighted budget. It's growth-oriented. It's visionary. And my congratulations to the people who put it together under the very clear 
and bold and decisive guidance of the Prime Minister. So far, far sighted and you said bold, but talking about the other ministry that you have, Petroleum Ministry, people were perhaps expecting something there? Such as? We're burning our pockets, sir. No, no, wait a minute. First of all, petrol and diesel prices are controlled not by us. Petrol and diesel prices are controlled by the international market. A Congress government in the year 2010 thought it fit. I don't disagree with that. They deregulated petrol prices. So when the economic activity comes to a stop, petrol prices, uh, crude prices come down to $19.56 a barrel. Now economic activity is revived. They've gone up to their previous level and higher levels, come to $80, $90 or whatever. They control the price. Now how did the Congress deal with this? This is the issue. In order to be able to go to the people with a populist this thing, they turned around and said, we will float oil bonds, which has started floating in I think 2010 or so, 2005. And they floated them for many years. Total, madam, of 1,41,000 crores. Today, you know what we have to pay back? 320,000 crores. Last year's outflow, I think, was 20,000 crores. Why does this happen? It happens because you want to kick the ball into somebody else's courtyard. For that person to solve the problem, you pass it to the next generation. What we have done, we have never collected more than 32 rupees per liter by way of excise. That is what enabled us to distribute the vaccine free to, you know, 172 crore people. I don't know that it is maybe even higher. That is what enabled us to pay our farmers. That is what enabled us to provide Ujwala. That is what enabled us to do Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana. Look, we were able to do it because we had some central collection. Yes. But when we saw that the prices were, to use your expression, burning a hole, we reduced the uh, excise duty on petrol by 5 rupees and diesel by 10 That's why. That's why. It's only a talking point. If I were a petroleum minister who was also able to take the decisions on the substance, I may bring them down. But you know, the government takes a decision holistically in terms of all other consideration. Today, yesterday I saw a tweet, where are these... How is there buoyancy in uh, tax collection? It must be the petrol prices. No, it's come from GST. GST yes. collection has gone up. In, yes. in, in the case of um, petrol and diesel, we brought the excise down. But madam, as I am ever so often uh, fond of saying, Tali do se hai. If we do our excise duty reduction, state governments also should look at reducing the VAT component. All right, that political discourse would continue. But before we sign off, Mr. Puri, Again, there was focus on uh, blended fuel. Finance Minister also announced that. What's the way ahead? See, or blended, cutting the import bill. Madam, blended fuel is a real success story. Let me tell you why. Many years ago, I think the year was 2005 and 6, we tried. We means the central government. I was ambassador to Brazil. That's why I know the story. That in 15 of our states and union territories, we just want to blend 5% yeah. of ethanol. Only 5%. We couldn't do it. There wasn't enough ethanol to blend. I'm very happy to share with you that the latest figure I got today, as of last night, we had done 9% blending already. The target was to do 20% by 2030. We brought that 2030 target now to 2025. Now, somebody says this is unrealistic. Yeah, many of the things that we decide to do are unrealistic. Central Vista Avenue, Parliament. But if we set a target, uh, we have a Prime Minister and under his leadership, I think the rest of us, if you set a target, you have to deliver. So I am confident we will deliver 20% blending. Alright sir, allow me to deviate a bit because we are a parliamentary channel. What's the latest on the new parliament building? I am on record to you madam in another interview to have said that the winter session of parliament, which is October of 2022, will be held in the new building. All right, with that hope, Mr. Puri, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you very much. Thank you.